It is absolutely astounding how terrible this movie is. It is set up to be an amazing movie. You have Adam Driver who has amazing action potential in Star Wars and amazing drama potential with a marriage story. Every day I wake up and I hope you're dead. And so many other things, but those are the main things that I recognize him from. You have the directorial debut of the guys behind writing A Quiet Place, one of the best movies that we have gotten in the past like 10 years. And this is produced by Sam Raimi, who doesn't even need an introduction as to who he is. But yet despite all of that, we have a movie that is 90 minutes long that had me pausing it like seven or eight times to see if this shit was almost over. It is a slog to get through, boring to watch, nothing happens, and I'm making this video about 20 minutes after finishing the movie, and I took extensive notes because I am gonna forget what happened if I make this video even two hours from now. But I think it has a lot of potential. I think hidden underneath those mounds and mounds of crap is the potential for a very good movie. And in my mind, I did the perfect fix for the movie Passengers of Chris Pat and Jennifer Lawrence. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I can put my beautiful mind to work again and fix this pile of shit. Now 65 follows the character of Mills played by Adam Driver, an explorer in outer space that is coming from an alien planet taking a group of passengers in cryogenic sleep when he is taken out by rogue asteroids and crashes onto an alien planet that we immediately find out is Earth 65 million years ago. Then over the course of this movie he has to fight off dinosaurs and other monsters and the terrain and just has a difficult time basically escorting this young girl Koa that he finds to their escape pod to escape Earth before the asteroid that was the extinction event kills all the dinosaurs and them as well. Like I said, on the surface, winning movie. It sounds great. I was excited going into it. I was a little bit less excited because I had heard a bit of reviews. Wow, this is garbage. You actually like this? And when I saw it on Netflix this soon after a theater release, I was kind of like, oh yeah, this shit probably, probably bad. It's bad. But when the movie wrapped, I thought to myself, even though this thing is terrible, it has salvageable parts to it. And if you change just a few aspects that I'm going to, it would be a good movie. So taking my notes here, let's just start from the very, very beginning, shall we? Now I wanna cut out the entire beginning of the movie. The whole bit where he's on his very obvious alien planet, talking to his wife and his daughter about how he has to do this trip and it's gonna take multiple years because she is sick. Cut all of it, just cut every single bit of it. We open up with him on the ship and he's doing a little bit of technical stuff. We understand that he's piloting it and everybody's in cryogenic sleep. And then we see him go to sleep and then it cuts to the asteroid bits hitting the ship and the ship goes down and that whole sequence is the exact same. But we cut out that entire beginning part with him on an alien planet. Because as an audience, we are talked down to in this movie to believe that we are stupid. You know, the producers behind this or the big wigs in their ivory castles or whatever, support the writers, support the actors, thinks that the audience is dumb. So on top of him on his alien planet, we also get a title sequence that says 65 million years ago, a traveler crash landed on Earth. And then it all fades out and Earth stays there for like a good solid 10 seconds to really drive home the point that we are on Earth. I don't want to know we are on Earth. I would have liked that to have been a secret. We are smart enough to know that this is either an alien guy or it's futuristic because, you know, cryogenic sleep and spaceship tech and all like that. So also just get rid of the title sequence. I heard somebody say at one point, and I can't remember who, I heard somebody say that you could have tricked all of us by having him transporting 65 passengers. And at one point when he's doing all of his tech stuff in the beginning before he also goes to sleep, you can have a little tidbit about how he's transporting 65 passengers. And maybe that's how they trick us with the title of the movie and not just blatantly have it be 65 million years ago so that we know what the twist is. Now the next part is exactly the same. I like the next part with all the drama behind it and where he almost kills himself, but then he goes to send off that very first message about how he needs transportation off and he needs help, but he doesn't send it he sends the one that everybody's gone and uh, he's sent, you know, wants to kill himself. I think 
that he tries to kill himself first and then he sends off the very first message. He doesn't send off the second message, so help is coming. And by the way, my movie is about half an hour longer just to have a half an hour bit in here that is like The Martian. Because we know from The Martian that you can have a very good story about somebody that is stuck on an alien planet by themselves. And as long as they're a good actor like Matt Damon or Adam Driver, and they can have some uh, good drama bits, they can have some humor bits. It's an amazing movie. I'm, uh, I'm gonna dip this potato in some crushed Vicodin. I rewatch The Martian like once a year because it's amazing. So draw inspiration from that. Have half an hour where he is surviving on his own here. Who knows how long? Maybe a month? Maybe two months? Uh, he's learning more about the planet. He's learning what he can eat. He hasn't seen any of the monsters yet because anytime he hears something, he goes back to his ship. And the girl is fine. She's in a cryogenic chamber. It doesn't matter when we get to her. So we can have a good couple months of him surviving on his own over like half an hour while he's just waiting for safety for somebody to come save him. But then at the end of like a montage of him going through all this, that's when the ship gets a ping that it found a cryogenic pod and there's somebody alive and he sees that it's a little girl so he ventures out to go save her. And over the course of five minutes, we see him open up the pod, we see a giant footprint, and he finds out about a comet coming to Earth because his really cool projector thing tells him about it. And that's when we find out that this is Earth. These are dinosaurs at 65 million years ago. And he gets this kid out of the cryogenic thing in order to save her. Another big change here, she speaks English. She speaks English. It's such a dumb choice to have her not speak the same language as him. What is the point of it? We can transition from the Martian over to basically The Last of Us, but in prehistoric Earth. The Martian's amazing, The Last of Us is amazing. Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey took on one of the best video games ever made to make one of the best shows ever made. Every single Sunday, every single person tuned in to HBO to watch The Last of Us. Why? Because it's amazing. It's just two people, a grown ass man that lost his child transporting a different child over to safety across very difficult terrain with things that are trying to kill them. And the thing that makes it so good is not necessarily the things that are trying to kill them, but the emotions within it and the connection that they form. You're flinching. The target's too small. I made it bigger than I should have. And his daughter, which we are slowly realizing over the course of this, is also dead and he has to transport her to safety. They have to get to the escape pod now. There's no time to wait for an extraction because an asteroid is coming to Earth. And over the course of their trip, all of this is the same. All of the fight sequences and the stuff with dinosaurs and the cave sequence and like the little weird dinosaurs pulling her away, all the same. I like all that, none of that has to change. But by with her speaking English, they bond. We have relationship building, we have uh, exposition. We have history of him with his daughter and we're learning that he's going through this inner turmoil. He still lies to her about her parents being up there, but she kind of understands that it's a lie, but she wants to believe it so she goes with him. And then at the end of the movie, with so many little tidbits here and there about his daughter actually being gone and why he is having such an emotional difficult time and he is, you know, trying to save her, then it's revealed when she is angry at him that he lied, that her parents aren't up there, also in cryogenic pods waiting to be saved. He reveals, my daughter died while I was out here. I'm not gonna let you die while I'm out here too. And then they have the whole big fight with the guys with the T-Rex, actually kind of liked that, you know, felt like a boss fight. And then they escape. And you know, now the movie's fixed and it's so much better. Maybe in the end there's only one escape pod left and he sends her up and he dies on there, but she is saved. But I like the idea of her parents being gone, his child being gone, you know, trauma bonding over this and him taking care of her. We don't need to see anything after there's gonna be an epilogue. We just kind of understand because us as viewers, we are smarter than everybody thinks and we get it. We understand what's gonna happen after this. And if they did that, I think it could have been a much better movie. Just being honest, I think I can fix it. I think I did fix it. It's a real bummer that this movie sucked. Um, the first time I did one of these videos, I talked about passengers 
and I did like a little bit of a rewrite rearranging on that, which is a common thing a lot of people have talked about, but I added some twists and turns in there. I haven't seen one for 65 like I'm doing right now, but at least in Passengers, it's kind of a guilty pleasure of mine and I enjoy that, especially the first part where it's just Chris Pratt alone on the ship by himself. I love a stranded fic like that in The Martian. I don't think I'm ever gonna go back and rewatch this. I am 15 minutes into recording this, maybe like 20 minutes. Most of it's already slipping out of my head. But I hope you liked my rewrite, and if you did, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and check out my other videos.